Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one. Don't call them Terran. Written by Led Azaid. Two, two, one. The two Spectalians stood at the landing platform, waiting for it to descend. The superior turned to his subordinate. He had something to say before they met with the humans. Whatever you do, don't call them Terran. The subordinate's visor buzzed and flashed with curiosity. Why not? I have read their literature. They've always referred to themselves as Terrans. The superior's visor flickered with amusement. Yes, in pirated First Age literature taken from the pockets of the first comer corpses, that was long, long ago. The superior then looked at his multiple tentacles, as if trying to get his mind off something. They, uh, certainly did change after the Croson Wars. The support and uttered a scornful noise. What? It's not like the Croson ever used discriminatory mutagen agents? Yes, but I'm sure that being barraged with an NBC material for years on end will change anyone's psych sub. No? Just as the superior finished talking, the platform finally started to descend. Waiting for them was a lone-skinned soldier in a signature full-body armor. The superior noticed its design was a bit different than what he remembered. It was more refined and had more material. As the ship's landing platform reached the metallic floor, the lone Sen soldier began to greet the Spectalians. Welcome to the federal state of Longsk, Longsk's planet of the humans. We hope you'll find your visit to be only the most exceptional. The Lonskin soldier then motioned towards the skyscraper entrance. Come, let us go in, lest the strong winds blow someone off towards the most distressing death. The Spectalians followed the Lonskin soldier towards the skyscraper. The subordinate simulated a coughing noise with his visor. The Lonskin soldier took notice and stopped walking. You have a disease. The Lonskin soldier turned his head around. Or do you really want to ask us a question before the meeting? Ah, uh, a question. The subordinate quickly clarified. He heard rumors of what the humans do to those they deemed unsanitary. Well, what is it? The subordinate took a few moments before asking his question. Why did you address your nation as the federal state of Lonsk? You, you always used to address it as just Lonsk to our previous diplomats. The Lonskin soldier relaxed a bit. Oh, that. Very long, short story. The war that unified the peoples ended, and that meant the peoples didn't have to be united as well. The Lonskin soldier turned around and walked towards the skyscraper entrance once again. The FSL is still big enough that calling it just Longsk is fine, but to respect countries that succeeded from us, some refer to us as the FSL instead of the Lonsk now. The superior was shocked. Territories seceding usually meant a total collapse of all Sepectalian civilizations. Spectalians were either united together or in complete anarchy. They reached the entrance, and the Lonskin soldier motioned them to enter first. The Spectalians entered. A grand reception hall was laid out before them. Old-style chandeliers hung from the ceiling. The walls were adorned with neon wall screens, papers, and bulletin boards. The floor was completely made out of glass, revealing the floor below them. Many humans could be seen below, each walking in various directions. The Lonskin soldier then motioned them to follow him through one of the many hallways, and the Spectalians oblige. Wanting to follow up on the Lonskin soldier said before, the superior began to speak. If there are multiple states on a planet, wouldn't that cause immense hostility and tension? The Lonskin soldier shrugged. Maybe, but they're happier now than before. At that moment, the wall screen to the left of them flashed and an adver advertisement for the state of the Free Fontas forces. It showed a clean, sunny beach, a rarity on a planet Longsk as well as a beautiful, tanned, and smiling girl in a slave collar and shackles, holding an oddly colored drink in her hands. Why she was smiling was anyone's guess. She also wasn't wearing any NBC gear. A rare sight, indeed. The Lonskin soldier began to speak again. Okay, maybe not happier. The Lonskin soldier continued to walk without further comment. Finally, 
They approached the room where the meeting was supposed to take place. The Lonskin soldier opened the door, revealing many humans wearing NBC gear, like the Lonskin soldier, sitting in chains. All of them turned towards the door. I believe this is where you all and I part. The Spectalians entered through the door and waved the soldier goodbye. The soldier waved goodbye back and began to close the door, but then he stopped and said something in a serious tone. He's right. Don't call us Terrans. The subordinate froze in fear. The superior stood in shock. The superior was about to ask how he heard them. Huh? Why? interrupted the subordinate. Is it a slur or something? No, nothing like that. It's just Terrans and Furs that we live on Terra, or, as we now commonly call it, Earth. Earth? asked the superior. Where's that? A faraway planet lost to time. But that doesn't matter anymore. Lonsk is our home now. We're Lonskin, not Earthlings or Terrans or whatever. Lonskin. The Lonskin soldier then closed the door. The Spectalians turned around to the people sitting at the table. One was tapping his fingers on the table. She dressed ostentatiously with brilliant white, sparkling gems covering her clothes. Well, she said, as a representative of the FFF, let me be the first one to welcome you Spectalians here. The superior walked to her and shook her hand with one of his many tentacles. And let me be the first Spectalian to greet the Lonskin for her the first time since the Second Croson War. The representative retracted her hand. Please, refer to us as the Fontan, not the Lonskin. Ah, yes, I see. As the superior attempted to once more to shake her hand, the subordinate still stood in place, thinking to himself, I'm going to have to remember a lot of countries' history, culture, mannerisms, and other shit, aren't I? It's like encountering multiple species at this point. End of story. Story number two, Their Truth is Marching On, written by British Tea Company. If I must choose between righteousness and peace, I choose righteousness. Following the grisly and public execution of Agent Owen Torrington for numerous acts of terrorism and attempted insurrection within the Istran Empire, the Solar Alliance finally decided that enough was enough. On April 15, 2361, a massive armada of human ships pushed straight into the heart of the Istran Empire, destroying several key forces and military stations within the first few months of engagement. The Istran Empire would find itself fighting for its very existence in the twilight years as humanity finally dissolved their government. What had prompted the human race to act in aggression during this period? What exactly was it about the Ishtran which had agitated humanity so much that they were busy funding terrorist cells throughout the Empire for several years on end before finally deciding that they were going to roll up their sleeves and dismantle the Empire themselves? Well, the answer is simple. There is a practice within the Empire which the human race finds abominable. There is a long-lived tradition within the Ishtran which causes the human to fume at the very thought of its existence, a cultural ideology in which the anathema to everything the human race holds dear, the notion of unfreedom, its allowed existence, and its encouragement and continuation in something the humans cannot abide by, slavery, the antithesis to the ideas of liberty which the humans staunchly stand by, was something they refused to tolerate. After so many years of trying to peacefully talk the Istran people into outlawing such a disgusting practice, the human people found their patience at the end. If justice could not be preserved around the table of dialogue, it will be enforced through the barrel of a gun. The Istran slaves were liberated, many of them having been prisoners of war and abducted hostages from various other civilizations which gratefully welcomed the return of their people. Mere months following the Istran Empire's ultimate collapse, the humans made an announcement to all civilized races of the galaxy. Throughout their time on the galactic stage, they had found that injustice and oppression had grown fat and unmolested by good countries of the galaxy. This was to stop immediately. Dozens of civilizations had their name written down on a blacklist which humanity had found to hold unfit governments. They were to either change their ways or adopt the human ideals of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
or face the terrible sword of human justice. Some were wise and chose to agree to such terms. Some weren't, and had their worlds feel the power of the human war machine. Millions of tons of ordnance delivered in the name of liberty for all the shattered hulls of countless ships across the galaxy as the faithful lighting of the human justice broke the backs of the tyrants. Some would grow to hate humanity for their proactive nature in enforcing the ideals throughout the galaxy. Yet, to the oppressed, to the enslaved and the broken, the majestic roar of human fighters patrolling overhead with the distant sound of boots landing on the ground, with the music of freedom fast approaching, the din and chaos of humanity fighting the battles of the helpless and the oppressed was a war cry for those who had lost their voice. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon, WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.